Good morning, friends, and welcome to this service of morning prayer. As today we mark the feast of St. Luke, evangelist and martyr. Welcome, especially if uh, you are joining us for the first time, and you should be able to see a link to the order of service there on your screen. And so let's take a moment to uh, be conscious of God's presence close to us and among us as we gather wherever we are. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will, we will rejoice and, and be, be glad. glad in it. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As, As in the beginning, so Amen. now and forever. Amen. I will sing a new hymn to my God. O Lord, you are great and marvellous. You are marvellous in your strength invincible. Let the whole creation serve you. For you spoke and all things came to be. You sent out your spirit and it formed them. No one can resist your voice. Mountains and seas are stirred to their depths. Rocks melt like wax at your presence. But to those who revere you, you still show mercy. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful, Merciful God, God, our Maker, our maker and, and our Judge, judge. we have we sinned, have sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed, and, and in what we have failed to do. We have not, we have loved, not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We have, we not, have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. ourselves. We, we repent. repent. And we are sorry, sorry for all our sins. Our sins. Father, Father forgive, forgive us. Strengthen, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Of life. Jesus, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. All creation praises you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless your name. They speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your great might. That the whole earth may know your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord upholds all those who stumble and raises up those that are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you in hope and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and fill all things living with your bounteous gift. The Lord is just in all his ways and faithful in all his dealings. The Lord is near to all who call upon him to all who call upon him in truth. King of the universe, you show the bright glory of your reign in acts of mercy and enduring love. Raise the spirits of the downcast and restore those who have fallen away, that we may sing forever of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Is there no balm in Gilead? 
Is there no physician there? Why then have my people not been restored to health? If only my head was a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears, I would weep day and night for the wounds of my people. If only I could flee for shelter in the desert to leave my people and forget them for they are all adulterers and a bunch of crooks. They bend their tongues like bows, bows they spew out loud, they are renowned in the land, but not for truth. They go from bad to worse, they don't know me, declares the Lord. Here ends the first reading. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. <clears throat> After these things, the Lord commissioned 72 others and sent them on ahead in pairs to every city and place he was about to go. He said to them, the harvest is bigger than you can imagine, but there are few workers. Therefore, plead with the Lord of the harvest to send out workers for his harvest. Go, be warned though, that I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. Carry no wallet, no bag and no sandals. Don't even greet anyone along the way. Whenever you enter a house, first say, May peace be on this house. If anyone there shares God's peace, then your peace will rest on that person. If not, your blessing will return to you. Remain in this house, eating and drinking whatever they set before you, for workers deserve their pay. Don't move from house to house. Whenever you enter a city and its people welcome you, Eat what they set before you. Heal the sick who are there and say to them, God's kingdom has come upon you. Here ends the second reading. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and the seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you, the noble fellowship of prophets praise you, the white robe army of martyrs praise you, throughout the world the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Bought with the price of your own blood and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we're all hoping for some good news from the Premier later today, following the good news that's come in the last couple of days. Good news is very welcome at the moment, isn't it? Today, the Church remembers and gives thanks for what we call a good news person. St. Luke the Evangelist, that's what evangelist means, one who tells or shares good news. And it's not just any good news, even if it's about travelling more than five kilometres, but the good news, the good news about Jesus. And so we talk more specifically about four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, 
who wrote the Gospels, which also means good news, telling about the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. Now, we don't know much at all about Matthew, Mark and John. But Luke is a little different because elsewhere in the New Testament, he is a character in the story. He was a colleague and traveling companion of Paul, as we see from him being mentioned in today's uh, passage from one of Paul's letters that's set as the third reading there in the pew sheet. Elsewhere, Paul uh, refers to him as a physician. And that fact and the style of his writing suggests that he was well educated. As a physician then, as a doctor, Luke is often associated with healing. In the Anglican Church, there is an order of St. Luke, which promotes and supports the healing ministry of the church. And there, of course, then is the link with the first reading that's set for today as the prophet Jeremiah laments his nation falling apart as Babylon is bearing down on them in the time uh, leading up to Israel's defeat and exile. And so Jeremiah writes, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Now Gilead was a region across the Jordan River which was known for its medicinal herbs. In other words, the question assumes the answer, well, of course there's balm in Gilead, which is why Jeremiah goes on, well, why then have my people not been restored to health? Why is the medicine not working? Why are the physicians unable to deal with what is afflicting the nation? The answer follows, well, the people have a deeper problem than just illness. They've forgotten God. A few verses later, after today's message, we hear God saying, they have abandoned my instruction that I gave them. Instead, they have followed their own willful hearts. They've gone after other gods. Now, it's possible that this passage has been selected for St. Luke's Day simply because it's one of the few mentions of a physician in the Hebrew Bible. A search physician, here we go, Jeremiah, that'll do. You've got to take the connections where you find them. But it's not just that. I think it also points to the human longing for our hearts to be healed, to find their rest and wholeness within the love of God. When we remember God, rather than forgetting God, as the people had done in Jeremiah's time. And for Luke, that's precisely what the good news of Jesus is all about. God shows up in people's lives and everything changes. Tears turn to joy, despair turns to hope. For Luke, the physician and the evangelist, the real balm, the real medicine for us all, is Jesus. We see it at the beginning of Luke's gospel with the shepherds, you know, these people who were looked down on, distrusted and disliked by plenty of people, a kind of rabble. They come to see the infant Jesus and then they return home glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Their lives were not the same again. We see it at the end of Luke's gospel where two disciples are trudging home from Jerusalem after Jesus' death, downcast and dejected after all their hopes have crumbled. And when the stranger who joins them turns out to be the risen Jesus, they realize with joy that their hearts were burning within them as he explained the scriptures to them. So which great Lucan story should we hear on St. Luke's Day? Those are two of many. Well, what we're given is this account 
which appears only in Luke's gospel, not in the other three, of Jesus sending out not just the 12 disciples, but 72 of his wider circle of followers to go on ahead of him and to prepare the way. The number 72, in some texts it's 70, seems to recall the 72, which in some texts is also 70 nations, named as descendants of Noah, way back in Genesis. In other words, Luke has in mind that Jesus is actually good news for every nation, for all the world. And as Luke describes it, Jesus gives some very specific instructions to this great team of good news people, of evangelists. Let me mention just three things in particular. First, they have to trust. They are not to take their own supplies, but to trust that they will be fed and looked after. Jesus tells them twice to eat what is set before them. In other words, to enter table fellowship with others, to join in community with them, but on their terms. Good news people know how to be guests at another's table and home, to walk a, a mile in another's shoes, to recognise then the importance of trusting and being trusted. So the first is about trust. Second, he tells them to heal the sick, look after people's immediate needs, offer what balm you can, in other words, so that their life might be less of a struggle. And then third, he tells them to announce that God's kingdom has come upon you. In other words, that there is a larger good news which is arriving in Jesus, even if they can only see a small part of it now. So this isn't actually a, a reassuring and comfortable passage from Luke's good news. For most of us, it's discomforting to imagine being sent out into an unknown situation, relying completely on people that we haven't even yet met. And in the verses that follow, Jesus tells the 72 what to do when they and their message are rejected, assuming that that too will happen in some places. And yet Jesus' commission to the 72 is still the commission or the calling of the church and of each one of us. The task is to point to Jesus, to be people of peace and people of good news. So for us, as a parish, those three elements of Jesus' instructions apply to us too. So first we have to trust and be trusted, to be present in people's lives, not from a place of entitlement or status, but sharing in life and community together. And then second, to seek out where we can serve the needs of others, wherever that might be. You see in today's pew sheet that one way we do this is through supporting local and not so local agencies through our mission giving. That's just part of it. And the third, to announce the kingdom, to tell the larger story of God, that great story that has a place for every person as we pray and live for the coming of God's kingdom on earth as in heaven. And so we are sent out into this week as people of peace, people of good news, trusting in God who longs to bring all people to healing and wholeness in Christ. Thanks be to God.
So let us affirm the faith of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and, and the life, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will, will be done on earth as in heaven. In Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our Give sins. Us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who inspired your servant, Luke the physician, to set forth in his gospel the love and the healing power of your son, Graciously continue in your church this love and power to heal, to the praise and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, gentle and merciful, creator of heaven and earth. Your word brought light out of darkness, and daily your spirit renews the face of the earth. When we turned away from you in sin, your, your anointed son took our nature and entered our suffering to bring your healing to those in weakness and distress. He broke the power of evil and set us free from sin and death, that we might become partakers of his glory. His apostles anointed the sick in your name, bringing wholeness and joy to a broken world. And so by your grace renewed each day, we pray that you might continue the gifts of healing in your church, that your people may praise your name forever. And so we pray for your church throughout the world, in every nation, remembering today the church in the Caribbean, in Antigua and Barbuda, Aruba, the Bahamas, Barbados, Cuba, Curacao, Dominica, the Dominican Republic, Grenada, Guyana, Haiti, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, St. Martin, St. Kitts, Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago. We pray for our Anglican Church of Australia and for this Diocese of Melbourne, for our Archbishop Philip, and our Bishop Kate. And today we remember the parish of St. Augustine's in Moreland. Show us how to be good news people to the community around us, we pray, that we might point to Jesus in all that we say and do. Hear the prayer we offer for all your people, for those who have been most affected by the 
coronavirus pandemic in this city and country and around the world. We pray for those places where cases are increasing, where the numbers are so worrying. We pray for their leaders and for their medical uh, staff and infrastructure. And we pray for, with thanksgiving, that the numbers are coming down here. We pray too for our leaders as they make decisions that balance everyone's safety and well being. We pray for those for whom our prayers have been asked. Remembering especially Jeremy, Olivia, Peter and Gustavo. Remember in your mercy those for whom we pray. Heal the sick, raise the fallen, strengthen the faint-hearted, and enfold in your love the fearful and those who have no hope. In the fullness of time, complete your gracious work. Reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, that we may be restored in your image, renewed in your love, and serve you as sons and daughters in your kingdom. At this time, we give thanks for those sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, who have gone before us in faith. Amy Lambert, Winifred Scully, Alma Thornton, Myra Hawthorne, Eric Starbrook, Marion Peterson, Melba Hansen, Eleanor Barrow, Percy Rice, and Frank Griffin. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. And so keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick, and lift up all who are brought low that we may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 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 Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, friends, for sharing in this time of morning prayer. We, as I said earlier, we await uh, what today, today's announcement will bring. Um, but there is um, a chance, uh, a likelihood even, that we may resume some small outdoor services uh, in the coming weeks as restriction, as we move to the next uh, stage of easing of restrictions. So uh, watch out for announcements on that. But in the meantime, we continue uh, back here on Facebook on Tuesday and Thursday mornings at nine, and then here uh, at, for morning prayer next Sunday at eight o'clock. Next Sunday, we look forward to uh, being joined by Nils von Kamm, who will be our guest preacher from Anglican Overseas Aid. In the meantime, as we go into the week, may God's peace be with you. <laughs>